let's talk about my life as a courgette. Not that's, that's my, not title, my life as the title, as a courgette, title but the film movie. called My Life as a Courgette, which is from a Swiss animator called Claude Barris. If you saw The Red Turtle um, in, in cinemas this week, or you're interested in The Red Turtle, there's a weird kind of relationship between these two films because both of them, well, both of them, first of all, premiered at Cannes last year. Another good thing about Cannes is it does tend to support independent animation uh, really well. Both were Oscar nominees for Best Animated Feature back in February. Both represent the director's first feature-length production. I think Claude Barris's longest film before this was Eight Minutes or something, so it's a significant, uh, the, uh, significantly longer canvas than he's used to working on. And it also has the same kind of economy of expression as The Red Turtle. That film is it, it was 80 minutes long, I think. This is 66, but it doesn't feel in any way that you're being shortchanged in terms of the story or in terms of the uh, the depth of character and certainly not in terms of the emotional payoff. Um, it's about a nine-year-old kid called Ikar, uh, who has been nicknamed by his mother, Courgette. His home life is not particularly happy, and there is a, a tragic incident, shall we say, at the very start of the film, that causes him to uh, be relocated, rehoused in this rural orphanage with around half a dozen other kids who are from similar backgrounds. Now, the, the film's been released in two versions. There's a French-language version and an English-language version. Here's a clip from the English language one, in which Courgette talks to a police officer who is involved with his relocating, and uh, he's voiced by Nick Offerman. How old are you, son? I'm nine. So can you tell me a little bit about your mother? Uh, she, she really liked to drink beer, and our mashed potatoes were always good, and sometimes we had fun. Okay. Not always? So, where's your father? Here. Huh. It, it has my dad's chick on it, too. My mom always said that my dad liked chicks, so I put one on there. Okay. Well, I'm gonna take you to a really nice place with other children who are like you. Kids who have no mom or dad. But I do have a mom. Uh, your mom is gone, Icar. My name is Courgette. Courgette? Did your mother give you that name? No. Oh. You can call me Raymond. Did your mother give you that name? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So Courgette joins these other children in the orphanage and the idea is through uh, shared meal times and through talking to each other about their pasts, through outings and interactions with the teachers there and also with Nick Offerman's character who is this uh, persistent figure throughout the film. They are trying to come to terms with what the world around them is like, why the world around them hasn't necessarily been that hospitable or kind to them so far in their, in, in their very brief lives. And it's kind of, particularly if you watch in, in the French version, it, it's reminiscent of The 400 Blows, the, the Truffaut film, but kind of turned on its head because you have the orphanage as being the place of refuge and the place of freedom where you can learn things and you can make friends with people. And the outside world is the tricky place where there are these kind of difficult influences around. If, if you... If you listen to the the the, the, um, the the style of the dialogue in that clip, they really in the in the English language dub recaptured the feel of the French dub very cleverly. It's very conversational. This film was was actually written. Um, it was adapted from a young adult novel, a French young adult novel that's not been translated into English. But it was adapted by a filmmaker called Céline Sciamma, who has done uh, Mark is an, an enormous fan. She's made films like uh, Girlhood and Tomboy, and these are films that are about coming of age, coming of identity stories um, that accord their central characters this enormous amount of respect. You know, we are going to not make you a, a cliche or a stereotype in any way. We're going to get right to the bottom of why you are who you are and why you are who you're becoming as well. That's very much the case in this film as well. And um, even characters who look like they're going to be types, like the, the, the classroom bully, turns out to not be that at all. Um, and it's very, very cleverly dealt with. It's also, as you know, you can probably tell from that clip, very, very emotional. For me, a 16 hanky wipeout. I mean, you know, head buried in tissues, like I'm kind of eating an enormous cream egg halfway through this film. Just, you know, absolutely, really, really moving. But every single tear is properly earned. And that comes from uh, Celine Sherman's script. It also comes from the medium itself. You know, stop motion animation 
is unlike any other medium in filmmaking, um, and it's absolutely right for this. The kids look small and fragile and toy-like in a way that makes you want to scoop them up, because if you were on set, you know you kind of could scoop them up because they're little models. And, you know, they're, they're mainly crafted out of um, Play-Doh modelling clay, but they have these incredible wide shining eyes, which are either made of glass or some kind of glass-like um, substance. And you know this thing in animation called a catch light, which is where, I mean, it's, it's in live action acting as well, where you have that kind of bright white glisten at like 10 o'clock or two o'clock mm. in the character's eyes. And it just encourages viewer identification with that character. Um, it intensifies emotional engagement. The catch light in these glassy eyes is just intense in a way that live action is never going to capture and in a way that, you know, hand-drawn animation, CG animation can never capture because it's the real thing. It's a light shining back at you. And it's just this wonderful synergy of materials in terms of what the film is made of, materials in terms of the actual writing, the script, all working together to tell this beautiful story.